Innovators. It's November the 13th. I'm Rick Blau, and this is the second in the Trees video series uh, short course. Um, it is a little bit chilly here in New Mexico. You see me with a sweater on. I do hope it's warmer where you are, but uh, I hope you sit back and enjoy Trees, the background story. Trees, or the Russian acronym Theory of Inventive Problem Solving, was started by this man, Heinrich Al Schuler, in mid the mid-1950s. Similar to this man, he worked in a patent office. The story goes that Al Schuler worked in the Naval Patent Office reviewing patent submissions. Over time, he began to see certain patterns and strategies emerge that inventive people had used to overcome technically challenging problems. More importantly, though, he saw that these solutions would jump from one industry to another industry, completely unrelated to each other. And he soon realized that these patents provided a gold mine of solutions. The seed of the trees method had been planted. At the conclusion of World War II, the Soviet Union had gained control of the German patent database and Stalin was preparing to sell it to the U.S. in return for food. Now, Altshuler understood that the seized patent collection was worth far more than the food itself. He, along with several other progressive thinkers of his day, dashed off an open letter to the national newspapers asking Stalin to reconsider. He also appended a short note at the end that explained his new theory that would allow anyone, especially Soviet engineers, to be much more innovative. But you see, at the time, inventors were thought to have God-given gifts, and the average man could never be innovative. Al Schuler strongly disagreed with this idea, and he believed that inventive thought processes could be learned with just a little practice. Two years pass, and Al Schuler is found by Soviet authorities, where he is rewarded handsomely, and summarily whisked away to an all-expense paid vacation at a remote Soviet gulag for insurrection. For how dare he openly tell Stalin that Soviet engineers needed to be more innovative? They'd won the war, hadn't they? Well, here Al Schuler puts his theories and methods to the test. He's forced to work in the coal mines where he solves many long festering problems. One of which pictured here, a rescue suit, separates the heavy air support system from the rescuer so that he might be able to carry more weight and actually rescue more people. The miners actually assume that he's worked in the mining industry for years, when in reality, he's never even stepped a foot inside the mine. He also starts a University of One, where he spends time with the detained professors, keeping up their spirits, and more importantly, gaining a more formal education on all topics within the confines of the prison. You know, you just can't beat a free state education. Upon Stalin's death, uh, Al Schuler is allowed to leave the Gulag, and he continues his development of trees until his death in 1998 of Parkinson's disease. Now, there's a whole lot more of the story, and I couldn't talk about it in three minutes, but uh, I hope this gives you a flavor of how trees developed, and we'll continue on with the actual theory in the next uh, sessions. Thanks a lot.